Hello everyone, welcome to Outdoor School of Thought. My name is Mark. Today we're here in Northern California in the Marin County coast. And today I've got my crabbing gear and we're gonna go for Dungeness Crab. In here I got my got my traps, got some herring that I've saved up, and we'll see what we catch. Also, I'm here with some of my friends. We got Sammy, Sunshine, and where's Rudy? Where's Rudy? There's Rudy. All right, so we're just making our way to this secluded beach over here. It's a nice little cove. There's not many waves, the swell isn't too high, so this should give us some really good opportunities to catch some Dungeness crab and some snares. This is awesome! <laughs> There's a promised land right here. Just a death drop away. All right, so we got some really good conditions here. We found a Dungeness crab on the shore, so I would say that's a good sign. There's also a lot of sand crab just laying around. So that's also a good sign of bait. I could probably catch some perch while I'm out here. Look, there goes sand crabs. This is really good. Really good perch bait. You want to try and catch some soft shell ones though. My buddy Elton made one of his own sand spikes. He took some copper piping and threaded it through and uh, kept it there with some wiring. And up at the top, he put in one of these screws and a nut to control the depth at which the pole will sit. So he was able to also taper the end so that could easily stick in the sand all right so what i got here today is a crab snare that i bought at the store i actually cut off the original snares on them and i used my own weed whacker line with some crimps you want to retrofit anything that you buy from the store because if the snares lay sideways like this that lowers the odds of you actually snagging um, a crab because when this lays on the ocean floor, they'll crawl on top. As you reel it in, you see there's more opportunities to get uh, get snared. So if they're if the snares are loose and they're just laying to the side, flopping around, there are odds that if it steps through and you know makes it to the sand, that it could actually just slip out. So you do want to maximize your opportunity of catching crab. You want to make sure that you put snares in here that stay up, because if the crab were to get on top of the cage then that gives a lot of opportunities for it to get snagged like that, see? So all this is, this is just some weed whacker line that I got off Amazon, some crimps that I got off Amazon, and then, you know, a, a regular store-bought snare that you could probably get at Walmart or Big Five. And I just added um, one piece of chain link that I got from the hardware store to a hair tie that I got at a dollar store, and then a four ounce weight. Oh, actually, I got some squid too, nice. So. I'll Throw some squid in there for extra scent. Got a huge piece of herring. I'm gonna have to rip that. There we go. So I got squid and some herring. That should be a nice little oil bomb, little scent bomb for the crabs. Where's the strap? Cool. So I'm just gonna go secure that. And let's go ahead and cast this out. So you might notice that when you see people, you know, doing crab snaring, they're usually wearing waders. They want to make sure they get into the surf so they can cast this out as far as possible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a few steps into the into the surf and then I'll chuck it out as far as possible. And I'll let it soak for about 15 minutes. So here we go. All right, so when you're gonna reel in, you wanna make sure that you aim your pull towards the horizon and you pick up any slack. You want to make sure there's some tension between the, the rod and the, the actual trap. 
So once you got that, you want to make sure you get it wedged into your hip. And then tight, drag, and in one motion you pull back and you start reeling. So, oh, we got one. Nice, first cast, we got one. All right, so it's a female. Usually you throw females back in because you want them to reproduce still. This one doesn't have any eggs, but I just think it's good practice to do that. You wanna make sure that every time you catch a crab, you measure it just to make sure it's legal. I mean, I'm gonna throw it back, but just wanna see what the size, size is. So you wanna make sure that it's five and three quarter inches. You wanna measure it. You wanna measure it from right here to right here inside the notches on the carapace and as you can see it's it's under so the, see that little gap right there it, it's not actually touching it doesn't go past it so this would have been undersized anyway but it's a good sign first catch of the day i'm gonna send this one back Give it some time. all right Gonna tighten up the drag. Leave about maybe like four feet. Four feet of main line out. Make sure that my loops are all reset. You don't want to lower your chances of catching any crab. So you want to make sure they're all set. They're all circled up like that. Then what I do is I make sure that once I'm out in the water, I loosen the drag up a bit so that when I cast it, if for some reason it locks up, it doesn't immediately snap and that could that could break the line. So I'm gonna loosen the drag a bit, reset this, walk it out, then recast it. it up a bit. There you go. And just to give you a, a info on my setup, I've got a 13 foot fib link moon sniper, got it off of Amazon. I got a size 8000 reel Yamoshi brand, got it off of Wish. You don't have to have anything expensive to get to the hobby of uh, or sport of crab fishing. Over here on this other pole, Got a Daiwa beef stick 10 foot and a Pen Pursuit 3 size 8000 reel. This pole has lasted me multiple seasons. Oh, this one is a rock crab. Red rock crab. These have to be four inches across the back. So. There's no slot for it, but obviously it's bigger than four inches, but it is a female, so we're gonna have to return it. 